Well, good afternoon, Mayor Davis. How are you doing? Well, I hope you are, sir. All right, I'm doing quite well. It's quite hot outside, which is unusual for this time of year, but I like it. You and I both. So uh, I'd like to start this interview off by thanking you for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you. I know you're a very busy man. So I want to thank you for that and everything you do for the city of Augusta. You're quite welcome. Well, it's my pleasure making your acquaintance and uh, I look forward to uh, our conversation. Okay. So despite what the name on the Zoom, uh, <laughs> Zoom account says, my name is actually Raymond Doe. Uh, I am the board chairman for Safe Homes uh, of Augusta. I'm their board chairman for the Teen Advisory Board. And one of my duties is traveling around the state of Augusta and promoting the awareness of teen dating violence. And the first question that I have for you is one that I always like to ask in engaging conversations like this with people. It's very straight to the point and engaging, and it really sets up the, the, pre the premise for uh, our message, and that is, did you know that the state of Georgia is ranked number one in the nation for teen dating violence? I did not know that. Uh, and I find it very unfortunate that Georgia uh, is ranked as high as it is, uh, as you've indicated, number one in the nation for teen dating violence. Uh, I find that surprising while at the same time, I understand the trauma associated with abuse. Uh, more importantly, I think this gives us a unique opportunity to begin working on the challenges that teenagers are facing all across the great state of Georgia and certainly without question here in Augusta and the CSRA. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, now that, you know, it's been brought to our attention is to understand what are those triggers, what's causing teenagers and young people to find themselves at the place of where they're committing acts of violence against one another. Right. So, um, that's one of the big statistics. Uh, when I first joined this organization three years ago, oh, we're actually number three. So to learn that we we're now number one was quite a shock to me. Uh, I'm going to throw uh, one more statistic at you just to really set up the foundation. Did you know that one in three adolescents experience some form of dating abuse from a partner? Again, those are statistics as uh, you prompted us with the desire to have this conversation. They were surprising to us not just myself, but my office as well. And they gave us opportunity to really think about uh, the young people in our community. Uh, we have done a significant amount of work uh, from 2015 on engaging teenagers uh, across our entire community with our My Brother's Keeper initiative. We've found opportunities for us to engage both male and female alike. We know that the global pandemic has certainly caused a series of challenges. Uh, not just from a healthcare standpoint, uh, but the unrest, the emotional anguish tied with sheltering in place, quarantining, isolating, all of those words that have been used uh, to begin addressing uh, the more meaningful challenge of COVID-19 are front and center with us. And we have to find ways to engage young people across all platforms. Uh, and that's more importantly, requiring us to meet them where they are especially when you've got individuals who are attending school virtual, as opposed to being on the school grounds with their uh, classmates, their friends, lifelong friends in most cases. And so uh, the statistics, while they are shocking, uh, they tell us that there's more work to be done in our community. Indeed, indeed. And I'm quite familiar with the organization of Bible Brothers Keeper. I know that they do, that they do a lot of good work. Um, referring to... Uh, the population, the, uh, the thousands of teens that populate just the city of Augusta alone, just omitting Georgia in general. Um, why do you why do you think that teen dating violence is such a prevalent issue? What makes it such uh, a popular issue that not many people know about? Well, I think you know when you think about the issue of teen dating violence, uh, and it being a prevalent issue in Georgia and here in Augusta, uh, people, you know, in this connected, social, and oftentimes global society that we live in. Uh, many people are communicating in ways that we're not necessarily used to, or they're not the traditional methods of communicating. You know, as I think about some of the things we've heard and seen in our schools, uh, and even in the community, where uh, events pop off through social media, 
uh, Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram, and individuals say something or they read something that involves a colleague, a friend, a classmate, or a boyfriend, or a girlfriend. And unfortunately, in this very socially connected society where information is instantaneous, uh, I don't have to run home and pick up a phone to call my friend, whether they be male or female, and tell them, uh, unfortunately, that someone said or done something that is offensive. And you find, uh, instead of having tools to de-escalate uh, in our networks as friends, as relationships, uh, they begin to escalate. And so, again, I think these uh, dynamics play a key role uh, in the high incidences and prevalence of teen dating uh, because you're communicating uh, instantaneously now as opposed to having to hear about it in the cafeteria, in the lunchroom, or uh, in the gym, or on the football field, or track fields. You're hearing about it right now, and it's front and center with young people. And instead of, again, de-escalating in these very charged atmospheres. Uh, not only that, uh, but when you look at, you know, some of the challenges uh, of Georgia's laws, um, and you have offenders who then become reoffenders uh, because there are challenges in our laws that relates to uh, minor abusers or even individuals who are just dating. Uh, and a lot of times you find cases where individuals have been, quote, taught to be quiet. Uh, there are just a host of dynamics associated with where we are. Uh, in a lot of cases, you know, the incidence of teen dating violence may be higher than what we know because you have that other uh, case of where people were silent. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do. I consistently say that there's a lot of work for us to do. I've already leaned into, I think, what may be one of the other questions you posed to them, and that's the narrative around technology, social media, uh, what they play in you know, relationships. And so uh, I think that uh, is certainly part of this conversation as well. I'm very glad, you're very correct. You're right on the money. And I'm very glad that you brought up uh, the significance of technology as it is casting a much wider net and is able to capture a wider variety of demographics. What I wanted to ask you uh, in relation to that is, do you think that, uh, what is your take on the positive and negative aspects of technology? We all know that technology is, can be used as a use for evil. It's used uh, for bad things all the time. Uh, do you think that uh, there are any positive ways we can use technology to positively influence the community and how should people navigate that? Without question, you know, um, technology can be used for many positive things. Uh, we can use technology to save a life instead of alerting all of our friends that uh, the latest beatdown is happening on War Star Hip Hop. You know, that's not where we need to be, especially if we're creating a moral society, a society that cares about its neighbor, that we are our brothers and sisters keeper. And so that's the thing that we wanna to continually to advocate for youth, for teens in Augusta, Georgia, that let's take a higher road, a higher approach of truly being our brother and our sister's keeper so that we're not uh, dumbing life down to the latest you know, 30 second video on our smartphone uh, that shows someone's hair being pulled out uh, that shows someone, you know, fighting and in those things, let alone taking advantage of a young lady. Uh, we need to raise up young men uh, in today's society. We need to teach young men how to be honorable young men. We need to teach them what it is to not only, quote, date a girl, but to make sure that I open the door for her uh, as opposed to saying, get in the car, let's go. Um, those things become lifelong lessons. They become transformative in nature. And so when you think about, again, technology, uh, it has its positive impacts on society, but in terms of teen relationship, uh, it's also proven to have negative influence. When you look at Teenage Research Unlimited, they talk about digital dating abuse as a serious problem in which abusers, they use uh, technology to control their partners through harassment, through text, and through calls. Uh, one of the most embarrassing things that we see happening 
uh, and quite frankly troubling is to use technology for bullying. We've seen people who take their own lives because of technology being used to bully people, uh, to embarrass people uh, because they heard something, they saw something, or somebody shared a picture that they should not have ever shared or even taken. And so uh, we've got to educate uh, teenagers, our children and youth uh, on both the signs of healthy and unhealthy relationships and have those open conversations with them to ensure that they're using technology appropriately within their relationships uh, at all levels. Sir, can I ask you to come around and do presentations with us? Because that was such a perfect articulated answer. Uh, uh, and I find what you said about building a moral society, a moral community so compelling because in our presentations that we do, we, uh, we present the factors that a lot of the violence that is started with the perpetrator, it starts in the home. Uh, and what you just addressed, uh, it starts in the home and, that, and it also starts in the heart. So building uh, a more moral society that is more compassionate and more loving towards others and you know, normalizing things like bullying and uh, digital abuse, uh, getting rid of that, that is really uh, one of the keys to bettering our society. And you already answered uh, one of my upcoming questions is how can we end teen dating violence? Education is the number one thing on our on everybody's list. Simply, simply doing the research, getting the information of how to end it. And we hope that we can take this and put it into practice. For that, uh, Raymond, we've got to have honest conversations. Uh, in violent society, we oftentimes allow things to happen uh, what I tell people is, if you see something, say something. It's not enough to see it and to laugh about it, to joke about it, and to snicker about it. If you see something, you've got to say something. You know, we watch television shows uh, and we see uh, people taken advantage of. You know, I shared this analogy just a few days ago. Uh, I think it's Dateline uh, or one of these news shows that come on at 10 p.m. on Fridays or late Thursdays. Um, where they set up the cameras in these nondescript locations and you've got these bad actors who mistreat people and you've got the innocent bystanders who sit there and they begin thinking within themselves, this is wrong. They shouldn't be doing this. I've got to say something. And, and there's a force on the inside of them. Uh, they're North Star. Uh, they're better angels. Tell them, get up and go over here and say something. Well, teenagers have to know that they can do the same thing. When it comes to dating, when it comes to violence associated with that, they've got to know that their better angel, their North Star has to be realized. And when you see something, you've got to say something. Uh, I've oftentimes told my staff this, I tell my 19 year old this, a man or a woman cannot be what he or she cannot see. And so we've got to model good behavior. We've got to model what it is to be morally sound and just in terms of how we treat people. Uh, but here's a big word of the day. We have to be sensitive to the needs of people. And when individuals are dating, uh, they have to be sensitive to not the uh, current norms, but the traditional norms are still relevant. They are still powerful. They still are important. And you acknowledge that I see Sharon Doe's name on the screen, but you are Raymond Doe. Uh, I submit to you, Sharon Doe, if she's your mom, has an expectation of who she would like for you to be as a model citizen but more importantly as her son, uh, so that you treat other Sharons the way you want to treat her. So we've got to elevate those conversations and really begin to amplify how important it is uh, to raise up a society of young men and women, uh, not ballers, uh, not people who do bad things. I mean, I can, you know, uh, talk about I started from the bottom, now we're here. I started from the bottom, now I got my whole blank squad here. You can do all of those things, right? Okay, but at the end of the day, how am I behaving? How am I treating people? Uh, and that's really the message around this issue of teen dating and violence. And we've got to elevate those conversations. What you said about sensitivity, uh, I found that interesting because um, I'm a teen. I don't know if you know, but I'm a teen. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, as I'm looking through message boards and on social media, I see that nowadays, People, uh, they tend to attach a negative connotation to the, to the term of sensitive. 
they think that people are, this generation is oversensitive. But really, in the context that I see sensitive and in the context that I just heard you uh, use sensitive, it seems more considerate. But we need people to be more considerate uh, of others' emotions and how they feel and how we treat them. You know, in elementary school, we're always taught the golden rule. And I know we are uh, treat others how you like to be treated. And, you know, of course, as you grow older and you meet with new challenges, uh, in, you know, practicing that is kind of harder. It's kind of easier said than done, but it's always something that still needs to be done. Things aren't always easy, but that's what makes them worth it. Well, I'd submit to you that the older you get, the more mature and sound you should be in your behaviors. When we think about life, especially in this context of our conversation, Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, a man or a woman cannot be what he or she cannot see. If I see violence, if I see mistreatment of whether it be males or females, then I'm likely going to behave in a similar way. You know, I oftentimes remind myself of these things that uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, not only that, uh, but we have to change our thinking. If I change my thinking, I can change my behavior. If I change my behavior, I can change my attitude. If I change my attitude, I can change my life. If I change my life, I can change my performance. And so all of those from equally important in the context of relationships. And so, you know, if we're giving advice to teens who are engaging in romantic relationships, um, I will tell you, you still can wait. You know, this notion of boyfriends and girlfriends, you can still wait. You don't have to put the pressures on yourself. Uh, having, again, raised a 19-year-old, uh, I've got nieces and nephews who, you know, find themselves in relationships. And what I always remind them is I am going to always be looking over your shoulder uh, to make sure that people treat you the way you need to be treated and you expect to be treated. Uh, and so, you know, one of the promising statistics that we've seen centered around this conversation of teens engaging in relationships was a Harvard study where 70 percent of the young people who were surveyed, they wanted emotional guidance uh, on how to engage in relationships. And so what that tells us is that young people are looking for and are open to expressing themselves and wanting uh, people of good moral judgment and character to give them advice. And my advice to young people who are engaging in relationships is to communicate effectively. Uh, that's extremely important. Communicating, uh, communication is essential to healthy relationships. Communicating with your partner uh, so that you're able to resolve issues. Don't find yourself in those pressure moments. Uh, if you feel like you're in danger of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, find a safe adult or friend to tell and communicate that to uh, who can bring the two parties together uh, and give them guidance, uh, to give them wise counsel. I'm reminded in scripture that it says that there is safety in the multitude of wise counsel. Uh, don't believe or think for one moment that you've got to take this journey called life by yourself. And more than anything, stay out of toxic relationships. Uh, you've got to value yourself. Every person needs to value himself or herself uh, in ways that sometimes other people don't. And so that's the guidance and the counsel that I would give young people in the Augusta and across our community and those teams that are part of your board at safe homes. You know, I look for opportunities like this to uh, talk in broad settings and circles to, to share what little bit of uh, experience that I have that can become your wisdom. You know, so often we tell people that experience is the best teacher, and I absolutely disagree with that. Uh, I believe that wisdom is the best teacher. There are things that I have experienced that if I share those experiences with you, they become your wisdom. They become the fuel for you living a better life so that you don't have to go through those same experiences. But all too often, we tell people, experience is the best teacher. Well, I've been through it, so you go through it. Well, that's absolutely not good. Uh, if I burn my hand, why would you want to burn your hand? I'm telling you, the stove is hot. Don't put your hand on it. And so there's no reason to, feel, to be compelled to, well, I want to go through what you've been through. Why? I'm telling you, it's burning hot. It's going to leave a scar. So take my, take my experience. Let it be your wisdom and live life to the whole and make it better. Sir, you 
are one of the best guests I've ever been. You have covered so many, uh, so many topics and issues and articulated them perfectly. Uh, I hope that whatever audience that I'm able to show this to really takes your words to heart, uh, not just the ethos or authority that you're the mayor of Augusta, but that you're just a mature and uh, a mature and experienced man with wisdom. Um, I believe that's all that I, I have to ask you today. I want to thank you so much for allowing me this time, and you've been a phenomenal guest. Thank you so much, Raymond, and uh, I wish you well, and I uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.